shouted button. Where's the yeah, hit gun? Okay, Sandy, are you ready? You're ready to go. We're on yep. air. Go ahead. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the iBug Buzz, episode 536 for May 30th, 2022. And this is Memorial Day in the United States, a day when we honor those that have given their lives in service uh, to the U.S. Uh, a good day to say thanks to all of those that either have served or are serving in our armed forces. So I'm Greg. I'll be co-hosting today with that awesome, hardworking Sandy Rao. For those that are new to the iBug Buzz, this is an open forum discussion where you can raise questions, uh, talk about issues related to the accessibility features on your iOS devices. And that would be the iPhone, the iPad, iPod Touch, Apple TV, Apple Watch. Uh, so we, this is being recorded. And if you have an urgent need to make a pit stop and you're afraid you'll miss something, or if you just want to refer back to one of the topics that we cover, not to worry. You'll be able to do that on the iBug Today website, on the iBug YouTube channel, or as a podcast episode on your pod, podcatcher app of choice. So to keep things flowing in an orderly fashion tonight, we ask that you follow a few simple rules. First, if you're not speaking, please stay muted. Second, when you do want to ask or answer a question, wait for a break in the conversation, unmute yourself, state your name, and then wait to be recognized. We don't use the raised hand feature, so you will need to unmute yourself. Uh, third, uh, we wanna give everybody a chance to participate. So if you've asked a question or answered a question, Please give others a chance to do the same before you jump back in. And fourth, please minimize any background noise. That would mean turn off the clock chimes and the phone ringers, unplug the A-ladies, send noisy family members to the other end of the house. Um, and how do you unmute? How do you unmute? So if you're using the Zoom app on an iPhone, uh, your mute unmute button is gonna be in the bottom left. If you're on an iPad, it'll be at the top toward the center. If you're on a PC, you'll use Alt-A to mute and unmute. On a Mac, you'd use Command-Shift-A. And on either the Mac or the PC, you can hold down the space bar to talk and then release the space bar to go back on mute. If you're calling in on a landline, you'd use star six. So I think that does it for my part of the introduction. So now I'll turn it over to that wise, that witty, frequently sarcastic, uh, our very own Wikipedia of all things iBug, Sandia. <laughs> Okay. Welcome aboard, Greg, and flattery will get you everywhere. All right. Thank you. And so we are going to kick off our uh, this week. Uh, it's sort of actually a quiet week. It's a weird week. We have a fifth Monday and a fifth Tuesday. It's just rather strange. So with that in mind, so today we are, this is iBug Buzz. And then the next event for this week is on Thursday will be Trekkie Talk. And we will be watching season four of Next Generation episodes 18 and 19. So join us on this same Zoom conference line at 8 p.m. Central. All times that I mentioned are Central Time. Then, then we have the iBug Night at the Virtual Movies, and that will be 
Friday, Friday night. And uh, um, and so that will be at eight o'clock on Friday. And we have social time at 7.30 and discussion and trivia to follow the movie. It's audio described movie to find out what the movie will be. Join us for the big reveal at the top of the hour with those crazy clues and even better prizes. All right, so what else do we have? Social media, social media, we have lots of social media. We have our website, ibugtoday.org, I-B-U-G-T-O-D-A-Y.org is the best place to get all the information. It's a very comprehensive listing of everything that's going on, upcoming events, what we've done in the past. So <laughs> you can check that out. Uh, you can register there and get notifications via email on a regular basis. And everything that we do, all of our services, registration, everything is free, free, free. Also, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash group slash iBug today. It's a great place to post information, look for answers and post questions and help others with their problems on your iDevices uh, and related peripherals. We have a Twitter account is at iBugToday. We have a Gmail email account is iBugToday at gmail.com. We also have a mentoring program. If you need help, if you're a beginner user and struggling, we were all there at one time, believe me. Uh, if you need help with that, complete the application on our website under the uh, training tab. And then we will match you up with one of our awesome advanced users. Uh, and then we will get you on, the way, on your way. It's a 12-week program, and it is also absolutely free. All that we ask is that you commit to doing your homework. <laughs> okay. I think that is it, Greg. And I will hand it back to you. All right. So this would be the time that we introduce ourselves. Uh, we'd ask that you, yeah, you'll need to unmute, uh, state your name, tell us where you're from. And if you're new to the iBug Buzz or new to your Apple devices, please let us know about that. So let me start. I'm Greg uh, from Georgetown, Texas. This is Herbie in Houston. Happy Memorial Day to, day to everyone and a great job, the wise and wonderful and all hail to the wonderful Sonia. And from Colorado, nice job, Greg, keep it up. This is Brad, I'm in Dallas and welcome Greg. Yeah, welcome Brad, thank you. This is Nikki from San Francisco. And um, I was a little bit late, and I wondered if there is a phone number that people could call who don't have computers to reach iBug today. I don't know if you gave that out or not. I did not. Over to you, Sandia. Is there a phone number? Uh, there is a phone number listed on our website, but that's really not the most efficient way to get a hold. I mean, it's not the better. The, the other options are much more efficient. So, yeah. Thank you. No, I was thinking about people who only have landlines. Thank you oh, so much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank oh, you. yeah. We we have a tap one tap mobile on our. Uh, there's there are ways to call in if they want to do that. Yes. And I think I think I heard Claudia. Yeah, you heard Claudia. Yes. And Claudia, where are you from? Uh, okay, we Claudia, on. She's from Houston. Claudia's okay, meeting in Houston. Okay. All right, so go on. Let's anybody else? Vincent from New York. Vincent, welcome. Thank you. And Sharon from New York. Sharon. Ned from Texas. Ned, glad you could join us. Yes. D from Southern Illinois. D, welcome. Thank you. Tim from Washington. Tim, welcome to you. Anybody Dana. else? Dana. Dana from Ohio. You have a joke ready for us? <laughs> no, no, but how do I get uh, you make use of the free stuff? Okay, you have you have time to work on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, anybody else? Roy from Fort Worth. Roy, welcome. Uh, Sandia at Houston. Sandia. 
Sorry. I'm not going to welcome Helene. you. You're mean. There we go. Oh, Hel- Helene, Helene from, Woodstock, from Woodstock, New York. Welcome, Helene. We've got lots of Parmy. workers on you too. Oh, who, I'm sorry, who was that? Parmy. 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 Hey, Parmy. Welcome. Michael Houston. Michael. Linda from North Houston. Linda, welcome. A lot of Houston people. For New Yorkers. And New Yorkers. Thomas from Grand Junction, Colorado. Thomas, a familiar voice. Welcome. Anybody else? Jody from New Hampshire. Jody, welcome to you. Anybody else? All right. So you'll have a anybody that joined us or hadn't has hasn't said hello. You'll get another chance at uh, after the nine o'clock uh, break. So who wants to start it? Who's got a question? This is Herbie. Herbie, thank you. Real what? quick, well, don't get to just real quick. The person that was asking about an iBug phone number were you referring to the Zoom meeting or just how to call iBug if they don't if you don't have an email address? Uh, that was it. The person who only has a landline, if there's a number they can call and ask questions. To, to, to ask iBug questions, but not right. to call into Zoom itself. Uh, right, exactly. Okay, so on the contact page, there actually is a phone number listed. Okay, okay um, I, I'll look I'll look it up. I haven't seen right. one So before. if you go to the iBug Today website and you go to contact us, you'll see an address and a phone number listed. So Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Herbie. Who's, who has a question? This is Helene. Helene, go. Um, so I worked very hard this weekend. My son was up and, you know, he's 47 in New York and techie. So he helped me a lot. And, and Herbie will be very proud of me. I now have two-factor authentication. Um, I have two fingers and thumb, you know, in my, you know, index. And he helped me to put an air tag on under my mailbox. Um, so, um, but what I want to know, my question is, why is it so low? It's like, you know, when I say to my phone, find my air tag, it's, it, it does, it does ping it but it's not very loud. So if I'm walking in my driveway and I'm trying to find the path, um, is there a way to make the AirTag, Apple AirTag louder? All right, good question. Anybody? This is Herbie. Herbie. Well, first of all, yes, indeed, Helene, I am proud of you. That is awesome that you enabled two-factor authentication on your phone. I want to say that there isn't a way to raise the volume of the AirTag. I think you just have to keep pinging it. Um, That is something I should double check, but I cannot recall any way to raise the volume level of it, unfortunately. This is Sri. Go ahead, Sri. So um, Apple is going to be releasing a firmware for the the AirTags, and one of the things that the AirTag... Firmware upgrade is going to do is increase the volume of the unit. Um, what kind of phone do you have? Um, it's 2SE2020. Okay. Um, I can't recall if the SE uses um, the U1 chip because if it does, it does give uh, directions, you know, really close to where the mailbox would be located, but I, I don't know if the SC has the the chip. This is Brad. What kind of a... yeah, go ahead, Brad. It's not in the SC 2020. Okay. It's a low end phone. It's in the 11 and above. <clears throat> is a uh, quest, question, Brad? Is it is it also in the new three? Two S at three S E twenty twenty. It's not in any of the S C S because that's an entry level phone, so it doesn't have some of the bells and whistles. It's a more expensive, higher end 
the phone have. The U1 is a chip that helps with location and it helps locate the, um, the air tag, um, provide a higher level of, of location information for air tags. It does other things too, but that's what it does with regards to the air tag. This is Sonia. Go ahead, Sonia. I have just come across a new tagging thing that's going to also be accessible, Helene. And so I'm looking forward to it. It's called a Pebble B or something like that. And it's supposed to be integrated with the Find My. So it hasn't even been released yet, I don't think. But once I get, you know, it's supposed to be louder. That's the reason I'm telling you about it. So I'll keep you posted on that and keep everybody posted. So is that an, Thank you. Is that an Apple? product or no it's not it's a third party but it is going to be you can still use it with find my from my understanding i could so we'll we'll find out we'll tell right. let you know how it goes okay thank, thank you thank you so let's so, move on let's get yeah. another question uh, this is herbie oh actually yeah. i had an air tag related question and i think um so it's i've had my air tags now for about a, about a year and it's now battery replacement time so i guess my question is like well, I don't guess, but my question is, how do you change the batteries in these things? All right, anybody? How do you change a battery on an AirTag? This is Sri. Go uh, ahead, Sri. All right, so just basically what you need to do, Herbie, is uh, flip it upside down so the plastic is facing away from you and take two fingers and twist it counterclockwise and it'll just the the metal piece will pop out and then um you know you can just replace it with the uh, new battery and then uh you know just bring the metal piece the metal cap back and just uh, turn it clockwise to lock it back in position and uh, when you put the battery in you will hear a, a beep sound to indicate that it uh, recognizes the battery all right, and this is Herbie. What battery yeah. does it take again? I know it's those circle ones, but I forget. I think it's the, uh, it ends with 32. Um, I can look it up and tell you later on in the, in the call. All right. So, this okay. is Sandia. Right. So, uh, go ahead, Sandia. Yeah, I think it's 2032 for some reason. And that they're sounds like right. really cheap. They're, you, know, you can That's... get several for like $10. Right, yeah, you well, can get those in the grocery tanks, store so. or drugstore, wherever. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-two. All right. All right. Other. Another question. Now, is the AirTag a headphone? Is that what we're talking about? I'm embarrassed to admit I don't know what it is. This is Sharon. Yeah. How was that? Recognizing that New York accent. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty um, obvious, huh? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, a little. So, so what is an AirTag? I, I I'm not sure I know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, can we get somebody talking to, to respond to that? What is an air tag? What do they do? This is Brad. Brad, do it. Air tag is a location device. You pair it, if you buy them from Apple, it's a little round disc. You can put it on your keychain, you can put it in your luggage, um, you can put it on a, on a string around your kid's neck. Yeah, I know people do that. Anyway, it allows you to locate these devices, keep track of them via the Find My app in your iPhone. Um, I say put them around your neck. People have been using them when they go to like amusement park, like Disneyland. They'll put them in a chain around their kid's neck and they can find where their kid is. Um, anyway, they're very useful devices especially with the newer iPhones that have the U1 chip. It will provide extremely accurate information on where that device is down to pretty almost pinpoint approximation. Brad, what but is even the... on the other iPhones, there, and I believe we heard Helene trying to use one, she I believe has stuck it on her mailbox. So when she gets near her mailbox, you can use the, um, you know, the feature, like kind of like a I, I, AirPods, if you drop your AirPods, you can have them emit a sound so you can find where they are on the floor. 
it's not real loud and that's what she was asking about so she's apparently stuck one on her mailbox so she can get near it and make it make a noise and find where her mailbox is probably in her apartment's mail room or something like that that's an excellent idea i had never thought of that brad what is the what is the cost on the air tags are they about, they about 20 them, 25 a piece they sell them like 20 i think they're 29 a piece 25 where you can I think they're 29 because you can buy them in a pack of four for $99. All right. And they, they sell all kinds of accessories because it's just a little disc. They sell little holders you can put on your keychain, um, a little ring with, a, with an eyelet like a keychain. And that's what I think people are buying and then putting them on a little, a little chain to put around, you know, your kid's neck. You put them on your dog's collar, mm. your cat's Put a little collar on your cat, keep track of your cat. You'd never Whatever. do that There's... to a cat. Oh, I used to have you'd, a little you'd collar and a rabies collar on mine. But anyway, yeah. uh, you can, there's all kinds of things you can do with them. Okay, so let's okay. move on. Let's, anybody else with a question? Uh, this is Vincent. Vincent, talk to us. I'll follow up on that air tag. What is the range? Anybody? This is Brad. Brad, go ahead. Well, because they use the network of the millions of people who have iPhones out there, the range is essentially unlimited. People put them in pack in packages that they mail. There have been stories of people put it in their boxes that they when they've moved, and they're able to keep track of where their possessions are when they're in the custody of the moving company. There have been um, all kinds of stories of people who put these things in things and then are able to keep track of them. People have been able to keep track of stolen luggage, lost luggage, lost backpacks, you name it, because of the iPhones, uh, the network within the iPhone. It just, it utilizes um, nearby iPhones and Wi-Fi and other things like that. So it's pretty unlimited distance. All right, let's move on to another topic. Any, anybody else have a question? This is Tim. Tim. Hi, um, I, with my iPhone, um, I recently got a new pair of prescription glasses, sunglasses um, that are messing up with face ID. And I tried to create an alternate appearance like using those glasses. Um, and I can't get it to work. And I tried, there's, um, what is it? Attention uh, and a required, like a, the required thing. I, I um, changed the setting on it and it still won't work. Um, so I didn't know if there's anything I'm doing wrong to not get an alternate appearance. Like it's, what's it called? Attention aware features and require attention for face ID. I tried turning both those off and taking a picture and it still doesn't work. Right. Anybody want to respond to that? Come on, we have a lot of smart people out there. This is Brad, if nobody else is going to speak up. Go ahead, Brad. I say, uh, to just give it some time. Um, from my experience using Face ID, and I've had one, I've been using it since the iPhone 10 first came out, it will learn you. Um, you might even try wiping out whatever you've got saved as a face ID and then do it again with your new glasses on. I mean, I used to have those goofy Ira glasses and it didn't work at first, but it did as time went by. I just, it learns the more you use it. And um, I say, you know, don't give up on it give it a couple of weeks, give it a month. Uh, if it's not working right away, I find that if you lift the glasses up out of the way where it can see your eyes uh, without the glasses, um, that, that almost seemed to help it learn me. But I don't know if it made any difference or it was my imagination. But I just say, give it some time. I don't know how long since you got the glasses, day, week, I don't know, but I'd just give it some time. Anybody else? I have never had a problem with 
with face ID and I'll do that with hats on, hats off, glasses on, glasses off. So I, I'm thinking what Brad was suggesting that maybe you uh, delete your uh, the, the past facial scans that you've done and, and try starting over might might work. You might try that. Anybody I'll give else? It a shot. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Anybody else? This is Jody. Jody. Yeah, I also understand that if you're using voiceover, that that attention feature that focuses on your eye contact with the phone is automatically disabled if you're using voiceover. Really? I did not know that. I know I've, I've turned that off. The downside of doing that, of course, is if you're out and about, it's somebody could grab your phone and hold it up in front of you and uh, run off with your phone and have have it unlocked. Uh, this is Brad. But uh, yeah, go Brad. Yeah, Jody's right. If you turn on voiceover prior to setting up face ID, attention uh, or awareness, whatever it's called, is disabled, but you can always turn it back on. I, I have mine on and... Um, but yes, in the beginning, it was it's disabled because it knows you're a voiceover user. All right. Any other questions? If I don't hear any questions, I'm going to start singing. And you, and <laughs> you don't want to add. This is Jody. Go, Jody. Yeah, I, I have a question about YouTube. I watch YouTube videos a lot. And uh, some of the videos, you know, you can like and dislike and share and it has other features like that. It seems like lately that a lot of those features aren't there. There's the comment section, but the ability to share is no longer as available as it used to be. Has anybody noticed that? And is that a setting or is that just a YouTube update or does anybody have any comments about that? This is Herbie. Yeah, go Herbie. So there are two things that could be happening. One, if somebody has marked that their video is made for kids, that does, I think, make it private and unshareable. And so that's one thing. Um, and then, of course, there are some other privacy settings, but you wouldn't be getting the, those YouTube videos unless somebody's giving you a direct link. Um, the other possibility is YouTube now has these things called YouTube Shorts, which are short videos and have their act weird, and I'm not a big fan of those, but yeah, uh, yeah. that that's the two things I can think of that are usually happening when you're having issues with those videos, especially the YouTube shorts. That's usually the bigger one. This is Terry. Yeah. Hi, Terry. Go ahead. Um, I have noticed that over the last several months, uh, YouTube has made uh, various changes to their uh, their platform. I, I have the unpaid version. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Um, it doesn't. But, uh, and that, that could be part of the problem too, because they, they keep changing it. The other point I just wanted to make is with the shorts, I kind of enjoy them, but the trick there is to you know, at the beginning of the YouTube, uh, when you first go in there, they give you uh, choices of, of topics that you can um, listen to and, or watch. And um, if I choose the, the topics that I like, and lots of times I choose uh, Huskies, <laughs> then I get even the shorts are are palatable most of the time. So um, part of that for the shorts, which is a new feature, I I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it, but I, I listen to them sometimes. Um, part of that is selecting the topics that appeal to you instead of just allowing it to do the all feature, which selects anything and everything and 
you know, anything goes there. Yeah, this is Jody. Yeah, Jody, go ahead. Yeah, the shorts do pop up a lot, regardless, you know, for and, and I, I do like them too. You, have, you know, when you're when you go through the loop once, you, you have to hit the back button. But I find that some of those you can even share at the bottom. They have uh, uh, various buttons, you know, various things at the bottom that you can do. But uh, well, that's interesting. So it's, it must just be that YouTube is changing things. Um, I was actually looking at the voiceover, uh, excuse me, the voice stream reader uh, voices, you know, all the different choices that you can get for voice stream reader voices. And there's a really good video there where somebody plays all of the, the choices so you don't have to go try them, you know, individually in the app. Uh, and I was going to share it um, and there was no share button. So that's, that's why I thought I'd ask the question. All right. Thank you, Jody. Thank Anybody you. else have YouTube experiences they want to share related to accessibility? Yeah, uh, this is Herbie. Yeah, Herbie, go ahead. I was just going to mention real quick. So I have the paid version of YouTube. And yeah, I had that's kind of what made me really start noticing just how some of the videos were tagged because we I've been experiencing the same changes. No, my reason for not liking YouTube shorts more has to do with so one of the benefits of the YouTube premium is you can lock the screen when a video is playing but that does not work for a youtube short and if you don't know that the video is a short and you lock your screen and the video goes away you're like what so that's why i find them that's why i found them a little bit annoying and this is jody i've got the paid youtube too all right um real quick jody because i was gonna go just look up the video real quick to see if i could figure out anything so do you know what that video for voice dream reader is called i just did a search for voice dream reader voices all right. And there's an eight minute video there that and they play all of all the various voices. It's really neat, too. Even the, they've even got the paid ones. So you can all right. hear what well, they I'm going to go like. take a look at something with that video and see if that uh, proves my theory uh, hogwash or not. So. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions. This is Joe. Joe, talk to us. Um, I'm going to be going to the ACB conference. I wanted to put on the cell phone, uh, the, uh, my itinerary, uh, hotel stay, all like that stuff. And I, I don't know where to, how to do it. I don't know if you do it in books or just how you, you copy things and put them and find them in the file. All right. Who can help Joe? Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Andrew. Um, and, Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so there's an app I, I've used before. It's called TripIt or TripIt Pro. And uh, you give it permission to, you know, go into your email. And anytime you book any kind of reservation, it will automatically put it in your itinerary. So it does everything automatically. So you go to the app and you go to the trip and it will say like what day, time you're going to a show or you have a flight. Okay. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Other yep. other suggestions? Is there a way to do it with notes? Oh, this is Joe. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay, Joe. Anybody anybody have a response to that? This is Terry. Terry, go ahead. I haven't tried it specifically, but if you have an email that has uh, information in it that you want to put in notes, I, I suspect that you could do um, a copy and paste from your email um, and, you know, copy those items, select whatever it is that you want uh, to put in your notes and then copy that to the clipboard and then paste that in notes. And um, most of the time, if you use the, um, the, the rotor feature to, to mm. first help you to select your text and then uh, copy that selected text and then switch over to your notes app and just paste it in a note that you have opened. Um, that should work. Now, once in a while, emails or things with links in them make it 
tricky to do, but I, I'm thinking for something like this, you in theory should be able to do it. All right. Thanks, Terry Ann. Any, any other suggestions? This is Roy. Parmy. Yeah, Roy, go ahead and then Parmy. Joe, do you have text selection in your rotor already? Are you aware oh, of that I think feature? so. I just have what, oh, excuse me, this is Joe. Um, I just have what came with it in the beginning. I've only used the rotor uh, primarily for changing the uh, voice, the speed as, you, as it reads back to me. Okay, this is Roy. Right. Go ahead, Roy. If, if you go to voiceover settings to rotor, and in there you can add text selection to the rotor, that's a really handy tool for selecting and copying text or actually selecting text. You have to rotor over to edit to copy it. Great. Right. Okay. Def definitely, so definitely something you want in your rotor. Yeah. Once you've added text selection to the rotor, you flick down to choose whether you want words, characters, lines, et cetera. Uh -huh. And then once you've yeah. chosen which one you want, then you flick right to select by word or by line. So it's a real handy tool. Right. It, take, it takes a little while to get used to that, but once, once you've got it with the text selection and, and the edit, it, it, uh, yeah, it's really, uh, really handy. Right. Uh, if you step, uh, Joe, if you yeah, step back just a little bit, you go to uh, voiceover first, right? How do I get to text right. selection? You go, to, you'd go yeah. to, to settings, settings, and okay. then click on voiceover. I'm sorry, voiceover. accessibility. Yes. Click on accessibility, and then voiceover, and then okay. just go down to rotor. Go down to rotor. Yeah, okay. and then just there, there'll be a, a list, a long list of things that you can select which ones you want to appear in the rotor. Okay, I knew there was ways to put tools in it, but I've I just never have done that. Yeah, I'm gonna. There's so there's so many things you can do with this these cell phones. Right. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that at uh, the iBug the the Apple Bytes uh, at uh, after nine o'clock. Excellent. All right. So Parmi, talk to us. Oh, oh, I was just gonna say I went to a conference one time and it was some kind of link in the email about the um. Yeah, itinerary or the dates and the events and stuff like that. So I was able to save the, um, I guess the full itinerary. But if you want to select different items, then I wouldn't be able to. But I was able to pull out the whole itinerary, like to my calendar. Okay. Thank you all very much. All right. Good. Another question. Uh. This is Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. I Go just ahead. had another comment about copying and pasting. Um, one thing since I learned about I use almost every single day is the three finger quadruple tap. And that copies the last voiceover phrase to your clipboard. So like if you're trying to do what you're doing, you went to your email and it's and it read all in one one sentence, you know, your flight, your date, your time, you would just do a three finger quadruple tap and it would copy that to the clipboard and then you could paste it to notes right that's a real handy feature real handy oh. gesture anybody else quadruple. this is terry terry go ahead sorry about that before i i didn't get anyway um another thing sometimes some of your links if at the bottom of your screen there will be tabs and there might be a share tab in your email and if um and it's especially helpful if you really want just about everything that's in that um you know in that email in that text if you double tap on that share and then flick to your right it will your phone iphone should give you options of different places you can share that link to or that text to um, and one of them is sometimes notes. So that if you don't have uh, the, the things we've talked about or you don't feel comfortable with using some of those or they don't work, that might be another option to try. 
This right. is Herbie. Yeah, Herbie. Go ahead. No, there, unless I've missed something somewhere, there is no share option in mail. There's more actions, but that's for reply, reply all. Um, you could print and maybe you save it to a PDF. That way, I'm not sure if that would work, but um, there is no actual uh, share sheet in, at least within the mail message now. What if you swipe up or down on one? I don't recall ever seeing one, though. Um, as it's a message, not a file per se. I think that's why it does it that way. But um, I've, I, there is not that I've seen anyway. I've not seen any share sheet with a mail message. All right. So you may have to just select text and then copy it into yeah. into the notes the notes uh, document. All right. Anybody else? This is Jody with a quick comment. Yeah, Jody. I love that three finger quadruple tap for uh, copying a link to the clipboard too, especially if it's a long one. And that, that's really neat. And then you can just go to edit and paste anywhere you want to put it. So I, I like that, that three feature too. Quadruple tap. Three finger, three finger quadruple, quadruple tap. Yep. And that'll copy the last thing that voiceover said. Well, it'll also copy links. So if you okay. go to, you know, right. if there's a link in the email, like for example, for the, uh, uh, you know, for the um, for the Zoom link for this call, you know, I copied it from the, e from the email and then I pasted it in my contacts. All right. Yeah, it's any this. Sorry, this is Andrew. Yeah, go ahead, Andrew. Um, yeah, just to, to comment again, you can you anything voiceover says anything. So like if you do doing something where you need to ver you get a verification code texted to you and it just comes up as a notification if you put your finger on the top of the screen where it reads it and do a three finger quadruple tab. It'll copy that to the clipboard. And then you don't have to go to messages and memorize it. You can just paste it from there. But, you know, literally anything voiceover says out loud. So it's, it's a very useful tool. Three right. finger right. quadruple tab. Huh. A lot, of, a lot of gestures to remember. <laughs> yes. All right. Any other, let's, let's get a new question. Ain't no. Dana, talk to us. So, so a priest and a rabbi walked oh, into the no. bar. <laughs> no, no. Uh, all right. Was, was it um, a blind priest? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no. Ahead, um, I want to um, paste my uh, link to iBug into my calendar and I don't know how to do that so I don't have to go to Zoom every time and put in the link and the ID number. How how do I do that? Good so it, question. All this right, Brad. Brad, go. Well, one thing you can do, for example, let's take tonight's iBug buzz uh, as an example. You can create a reoccurring calendar entry for, you know, in this case, it'd be um, Monday at uh, eight o'clock Eastern, seven central, whatever your local time for the iBug Buzz is. Then in the location place, you can uh, copy and paste the, uh, the Zoom link for, you know, and from the, um, any iBug, you, know, you can get it from the website. You can get it from any email because iBug uses the same Zoom link for everything. So anything you've got, an announcement or something from iBug that's got that. And if you're on your iPhone, you simply go to where it starts to read the URL and then do that gesture, the, what is it, three-finger quadruple tap we've been talking about. And um, in the case of something like a link that's really long, you don't even have to let it finish reading the link because uh, the iPhone's already read it. Uh, VoiceOver's already read it. It's in the buffer while it just takes its time to, you know, read the entire long link to you. So if you copy that link, then go to your calendar and paste it in that location space and then save that calendar entry. Anytime you access that link, it'll show up on your, you can set it for, you know, every Monday. So it'll be there every Monday. You go to that calendar entry, they're listed below the calendar, you tap on it, 
you put your finger on it and you swipe down and you'll hear your actions, you know, your rotor set to actions by default and you'll hear it say join and you just double tap and there you are. It opens the Zoom app and you are in the room. Okay, thanks. Uh, this is Dana. I, yeah, go ahead, Dana. Uh, apparently, I did that by accident with the uh, uh, mini buzz uh, because it's always there on Mondays <laughs> or I mean Tuesdays. It's there on Tuesday. So mm -hmm. I accidentally did that somehow. <laughs> but thank you, Brad. I appreciate it. All right. This is Brad again. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. I was going to say, yeah, the problem with the mini buzz is it's clubhouse. So it's not the same link every week. Right. Correct. Because I've tried that and it doesn't work. I have to go to clubhouse, see where Michael's added it to the, uh, my activities. And then I can tap on it and add it to my calendar that way. But yeah, it does not work for clubhouse events, but it works great for zoom events, especially the iBug ones. Cause it's the same right. link every time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Good. How about another question? I'm feeling a song coming on. Somebody better ask a question. Come on, guys. I could also tell a joke. <laughs> yeah, that would be an option. Okay, this is this is Janet from Colorado. Yeah, Janet. I have a, I have a comment um, for Dana. Okay. I have the um in the Zoom app. It saves your uh, meeting history, and I just go to my meeting history, go to the iBug, go to done, type in the um password, and then and then hit join, uh, join hit password, and then hit hit continue. That's how I do it. Yeah, this is Dana. Go ahead, Dana. Uh, yeah, Janet. Uh, that's. I do that all the time, and uh, that's what I was just just trying to avoid doing. Ah, uh, okay. I wasn't sure or not, so I wanted I wanted to clarify it. Yeah, thank you though. You're welcome. All right. The down the downside is you have to enter that password as opposed to just clicking on the the iBug Zoom link. All right. It's Other Kelsey questions? with a comment. Yeah, go ahead. What I've done and it works pretty well is you can actually when you if you go into i believe it's settings and i think if is it passwords where you can add that to, you can add a zoom link to your icloud keychain so what you would what you can do is in, in the url you can put something like ibugtoday.org or whatever and then in the username you put the meeting id whatever that meeting id is and then in the password field you put in the whatever the passcode is for that zoom meeting and you when you go into your when you go into the meeting history and you go into where it have to put the passcode in you can use the password autofill from keychain to autofill that password. I've done that before. Right, just on the virtual keyboard. Correct, yeah, you right. go to, I believe it's, and in some cases it might even, you might not have to tap on that autofill. It might automatically give you suggestions. I know, I know my Zoom will sometimes, it will sometimes pop up with a few suggestions of recent meeting history meetings that I've attended. So you can you can do it that way, but you may have to tap on that password autofill. It just depends on how you have your Zoom set up. All right. Good. Parmy. Parmy, go ahead. You know, I'm trying to clarify. If you're trying to do it on them, if you try and do it on the Zoom week, because when I use that book, I say my information is a phone number like a contact and it automatically dials the number for me pushes the pound key and put in the password and puts me in the room from just the uh, phone number in the access code right 
This is Herbie. Yeah, go ahead, Herbie. So what we're talking about here is the actual Zoom link. So if you've not done so, you should actually download the Zoom app, <clears throat> excuse me, for your iPhone. And then in the email or on the website, there's an actual link you can click on, and that'll launch the Zoom app. And that'll give you a much better quality sound than what you'll get with the actual phone aspect of it. Um, and then you can also, you know, double tap and hold and that you, you can do the three finger double uh, tap quadruple tap i'm sorry i think you can also double tap and hold on the link and get the context menu to copy that way and um you can paste it into you know like the location the screen part of the calendar and access it that way or the third method that kelsey was talking about was putting the uh, link directly into keychain and um but that's with the actual Zoom link. What you do with the phone is a little bit different because you're just saving it as a phone number, not as a direct URL. And you know okay. it, that that and that's the one tap mobile and the saving a contact with that is a different process altogether than the um, what you would call it the uh, um, um, saving an actual link. So this is Brad. Okay. Yeah, Brad, go ahead. Yeah, and to follow up on, uh, or to add to what Parmi was talking about, yeah, you can create a contact and you can put a phone number with like the one tap, but there is also an option in contacts to save a URL in your contacts, or I think they call it a web link, and you can copy and paste the uh, Zoom link to any website and put it in there, and you can make a contact card out of that as well and you will find it in there and um you know you can even relabel them i created a custom label so that it says zoom link instead of website but same thing and then you can open up the contact and tap on it and it'll do the same thing as some of these other methods we've been talking about it'll open up the zoom app and then there you are right that's that's the huh. way i have mine set up and that's boy that's a real convenient way to do it is that Parmi, is that you yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was trying to talk okay, about so you just go and copy the link and then paste it into your contact. This is Brad. Is right. link? Go ahead, Brad. Yeah, you can open up that contact that you've already got for iBug. Okay. And you've got it saved as a phone number, like you said, with the phone number and then a couple of commas and the web ID, that meeting ID, a couple of commas and the passcode. Well, if you hit edit in the upper uh, right hand corner, you will look down through and there's all kinds of other things you can add. You can add another phone number, you can add an address, keep on swiping down and you'll eventually find it'll say website. So you oh. can you can add a website and there'll be an edit field and you can then uh, copy and paste the Zoom link right in there. And then you can leave it labeled website or um, I went to that field and tapped on it and I went to add a custom label and I created a custom label that says Zoom link. So it's labeled appropriately, but it doesn't matter what you call it, just so you know what it is. And then you open up the contact just like you're doing for the phone number. But instead of tapping on the phone number, you tap on the link and it'll open the Zoom app and you're in. All right. Thank you. This is Sri. Yeah, Sri, go ahead. Um, I recall Maria did a, a, a demonstration on how she created a URL to be a shortcut, you know, like an icon on your home screen where it'll just take you to the web page. Can that be applied here? This is Brad. Yeah, Brad, go ahead. Yes, it can. That's yet another way to do it because I think we covered that in a, um, a buzz call. Maybe, yeah, maybe it was Maria that did that one time. But yes, that's another way. You're just saving a web um favorite or bookmark or whatever you want to call it. It's in your, it's in your, um, your share sheet, you know, save it as a, uh, you know, Safari. And when you're in Safari, save it as a, um, um, a bookmark, save it as a favorite. And one of the others is save as a, can't remember how it's labeled desktop item or home screen, save to home screen, probably says something like that. But to do that though, what you're going to need to do is put it in the address the address field, you're going to have to execute the link. 
you're going to get a little box that's going to pop up asking you if you want to open this in Zoom and you have allow or cancel, you hit cancel. And so it doesn't open up Zoom. And then right there, you then save it to your home screen or save it to your favorites or whatever you want to do with it. But that's yet another one of the many ways to do it. All right. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Sri. Sandy, are you still awake? <laughs> oh, what? What? We wake up now? I was, just, I was just checking to make sure you're still awake. Well, yeah, All you're right. doing great. I, I can okay. sit back other, and relax. Other, other questions? You guys are doing a great job. I, I mean, this is a wonderful resource for us to kind of kind of share our knowledge and, and uh, learn or get reminded of, of some of the accessibility features. Absolutely. So how about, how about another question? This is Jody. Jody, go. What is, what is a sheet grabber that I see on the top of emails occasionally? Anybody want to uh -huh. respond to that? This is Sandia. Sandia. We have been trying to figure what that is. Helene has brought that up many times, Ms. Helene. I'm sorry, okay. I still haven't. Yeah. Uh, I see it too once in a while, and I want to remember what I did to recreate that. I sometimes have seen it, I think, when I have created a draft, but I I can't really be clear. And I'm sorry, we haven't. I'll have to really make a note to follow up and see when it happens. Okay. This is Sri. Yeah, Sri, go ahead. So basically what happens is the sheet grabber comes up when you have your virtual keyboard come up. And if you tap on the sheet grabber, it um, hides the virtual keyboard. So you could oh, kind of- Oh, work, I don't want to do that. You can kind of work on it whether you, if you don't want the keyboard to be on the screen. How do you get the, just Jody, how do you get yeah. the keyboard back? Uh, I believe if you go back to the text edit, it'll relaunch the keyboard. If you're in a text edit field. All right. I thought the okay. sheet grabber was the, the just a coding thing that somebody had written in and it was the equivalent of a back button going back a screen. This is Shree. Yeah, go ahead, Shree. Whenever I, whenever I tap on it, the virtual keyboard goes away. Okay. Anybody else? Another question? We have a couple minutes left and, and we don't want to get Dana started telling jokes. <laughs> Sharon. Sharon. Well, wait, hang on. You had Linda first. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, so, Linda and then That's Sharon. Um, when I drop my AirPods, how can I find them? Okay. Anybody want to respond to that? This is Sri. Sri, go ahead. Uh, I'll give you the poor man's example. I get on my knees and I do a grid <laughs> technique and fan my hands because by the time I'm trying to get my phone to beep, it's probably more work. Okay. Isn't it but amazing? I, there are the those, ways. So. Isn't it amazing how those AirPods bounce? And they, they go, yes. they, they can cover a lot of ground. Yes, they do. This is Brad. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. Yeah, there's a feature in the Find My app where you can, uh, and I don't do it every day, so I can't provide de detailed and step-by-step, -step, but if you find your AirPod, uh, there is a option in there to make your AirPod emit a noise. It'll emit a beep, uh, repeated beeping, and you can find them. You can find a lost AirPod that way. Uh, you got to have the case with you, of course, I think. I can't remember all the steps, but I've dropped them on the floor. And like Greg says, man, they hit the floor and they will guarantee to bounce under a piece of furniture at the far <laughs> corner of the room where you never expected it could possibly get to. And it's not real loud. So if you got any other noise mm -hmm. going on or if you're outside, you can forget it. You'll never hear it. You just um, need, to, you need to put an air tag on it. So, yeah, and then it won't bounce as far. Won't bounce as far because you're not going to hear the air tag either. <laughs> Just ask Colleen. It's Marie. Yeah, go ahead, Marie. When you go into the Find My, you click on Devices, and then there's a list of your devices that that have the Find My feature. You locate the Air uh, the AirPods, and once that you click on that, and one of the options is play a sound. 
and you click on play a sound, you don't not have to have the case with you because I've I've lost mine a couple of times, okay, so, so I know. I was going to say Marie must lose hers frequently. <laughs> yeah. This is Nikki. All right, yeah, let me, let's go back to. Now. I think Sharon had a question. Yeah, we want to come back after eight o'clock. Sure. Okay? And do right. that. Okay. Okay. All so right. now, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. Gonna... no. Nick, Nikki All had right. a question. All right. Thank you. Hang on one second. So thank you. Um, what is your name again? Greg. Greg. <laughs> God, you get no respect on this show. <laughs> I tell you. Breaking, he breaking you in all the new flattery guy. And you Break, forget his name. Breaking yeah. in the new guy. Okay. All right. Thank you. That was a great first half. And we are going to get started with iBug Night uh, at the virtual movies. We're going to start with the big reveal with those fantabulous, incredible clues. People that people didn't say, call in. Do we have to? I don't want to. Okay. Well, you're the boss. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I totally forgot. I got, see, Greg just got me all discombobulated or mobulated or whatever it is. Okay. All right. New people who haven't had a turn, please say your name and where you're from. Who would like to go first? Anybody that didn't get a chance first time? Marty, Philadelphia. Hey, Marty, welcome. All right. Happy holidays. Who else? Bridget from Atlanta. Hey, Miss Bridget, welcome. Terry Thank from you. Arlington Heights, Illinois. Terry, and welcome. Andrew Kathy from Vermont. From hey, Andrew. Yeah. Andrew's a new person here, right? <laughs> yes, my first time. Hey, how'd you hear about iBug? <laughs> well, I'm I'm friends with you on Facebook and I'm follow the page. So I saw the link today. That was oh, it. All right. Well, great. We're friends. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good deal. <laughs> and I know, but what kind of eye devices do you have? This is what we normally interrogate our new people. So what oh, you man, I, iPad, MacBook, iMac, iPhone, Apple TVs, HomePods, EarPods. All right. Well, <laughs> you are all set. Well, we're so happy that you're here, Andrew. Thank you very much for coming tonight and sharing what you know. So thank you. All right. Anybody else? See, yeah, I was I could be nice to new people. Chanel and Houston. Hey Chanel, welcome. Hello. Okay. And Happy your favorite Kelsey. person, Kelsey's here. All right, favorite. Hey Kelsey, welcome back. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I've been away for so long. Oh, it's okay. We're glad you're back. All right. Who else? Anybody else want to say hi? This is Shree from Virginia, and I guess Sonia, you got one friend. Oh, uh, yeah. I pay her a lot of money, man. Okay, go ahead. Next. Anybody else? David from Houston. David, welcome. Anybody else? Say hi. This is Joe from Norman. Joe, Oklahoma. glad to have you back, sir. Glad to have Thank you. you. Okay. This is Marie in Reno. Hey, Marie. Welcome. Kathy from Tulsa. Kathy, welcome to you. Okay, anybody else didn't get to say hi? This is Jacob. Hey, Jake, welcome back from Michigan. Hello, thank you. All right. Yep. Okay, anybody else? We had lots of people come in at the second half here. This, okay. is Jody from, this is Jody from New Hampshire. I wanted to welcome my neighbor, Andrew, in Vermont. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's right. Okay. <laughs> All right, welcome. All right, so uh, now, now, because I... Now, now we're going to do this again, Shree. Okay, here we go. So we're going to uh, now turn to the iBug guy with those clues to figure out what on earth the movie is going to be. iBug guy, or I don't know. Are you there? Wow, oh, that's pretty fancy. I don't know who's coming on. Hello. <laughs> Where are you? Music with no show. I guess. Mr. Iba guy, are you there? Such a great introduction and no show. I know. Are you hearing me? 
now we hear you. What yeah, was that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm oh. here. Sorry, my headphones jacked up on me. All right. <laughs> welcome. Ever? No, not welcome. We've been here. Ah, glad to be here at the end of this three day lovely weekend, holiday weekend. And hopefully everybody got a chance to have a little time with family or friends or whatever the case may be. And, uh, of course, honoring all those that uh, have paid the price and allowed us to be free and have this great nation that we live in. Uh, and also congratulations to the new guy, our newest facilitator, whatever his name is. <laughs> Glad to have him on board. We'll learn eventually. Yeah. Hey, I, I was wondering, do you have a favorite color, color, Sonia? Color? Turquoise. Turquoise. Well, I just found this new color that just I really love. It's going to become my favorite color. It is called Drunk Tank Pink. <laughs> Drunk. Drunk Tank Pink. Yes. It is a shade of pink that has been studied and shown to reduce hostility, violence, and aggressiveness. Oh. And so they decided to paint uh, holding cells when someone first gets arrested. <laughs> and so I'm going to uh, paint my office with that, and I should be able to be able to uh, continue to work with you and. <laughs> All the work done on iBug. All right. So, so okay. when you get drunk, you can you can go in there, right? <laughs> That's it. You got it. All right. Now it is time for Michael's. Oh my goodness! Okay. All right. We are ready to give the big reveal. And we have some fabulous clues. Why don't I get my assistant pull those up for me? Remember the rules. Say your name, wait to be recognized before you answer the uh, your guess for the title of the movie. So let's get started. Without further ado, our first clue, number one. Our film this week takes us back across the pond. And just a reminder, it's one guess per clue. One guess per clue and five guesses per game. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. This is Brooks. All right, Brooks. The Lion in Winter. The Lion in Winter. We have, it's been a while since anybody's got this on a first guest. And Brooks, guess what? You still didn't get it. All right. Good try, though. But he won last week, so. Okay. This is Shree. Yes, he was. Okay, Shree. Letters to Julia. Letters to Julia. Juliet. Yeah. Oh, Juliet. Well, if you'd have said Julia, you would have been closer, but that's not it either. Guesses that every time. All right. We are moving on. Any other guesses? <clears throat> no. Our film this week takes us back across the pod. I can't talk. I need some water. Hold on. It must have been all about Michael Minutia. Okay. Go on. I have clue two. Goodness. Can you go All on? right. Okay. Clue number two. The main character ascends to a powerful position despite having a disability and not really wanting to have the position. This is Ned. Uh oh, Ned. I have a feeling. The King's Speech. The King's Speech is no oh, no yes 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 ding 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 ned gets it on clue number two 
Wow. That well, was awesome, Ned. Yes, your music reminded me of something royal because <laughs> this week is Queen Elizabeth's uh, Jubilee week. Oh, is it? No wonder yes. we picked this movie. Way to go. That's Whoever her father. George the Sixth would be her father. Oh, that is so cool. What a connection. I should have had that as one of my clues. Yeah, seven years right. on the throne. Very good. Congratulations to Ned. Okay, Johnny, what do we have for our winner today? Oh, my goodness. You are in for a treat this week, Ned. You will have the original royal microphones that have been safely protected and preserved for you in the EMI archives for over 70 years. These were designed for King George V, George VI, Queen Mary and Elizabeth, Queen Mother. What do these look like? They are adorned with silver and chrome details bearing the royal coat of arms and other individual insignia, including an iBug logo. Just don't tell EMI about that. Um, also, to go along with your microphones, you will have a home phonograph recorder. It's a wind-up recorder. Uh, it is by Silverton. That's the name, Silverton. And guess who produced that? Sears, Roebuck & Company, which I think is no longer in existence. Anyway, go have fun with your phonograph and microphones. There you go, Mr. McCulloch. This is Herbie. Go ahead. So wait a minute, I'm confused. If iBug's only been around for what, 11 years, how could you have had something in your royal archives for over 75 years? EMI, EMI, EMI. archives. EMI. EMI. Archives. Yeah. How could you have it for over 75 years? And two, how did somebody such as you, I mean, I guess you are queen or something, get a hold of such uh, royal microphones in the first Anything place? Anything is possible in the iBug world. All right, now we're moving on. So congratulations to you, Ned. Good job and good job. And Mr. McCulloch, would you like to say Way to go, Ned. You did such an awesome job. Wow. Okay. That's wow. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Mr. McCulloch, say goodnight or you're done. Okay. Here we go. We're moving on. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we are going to go back to our iBug Bites segment. This is a segment that we do on a weekly basis. And it is a brief demonstration emphasis on brief. Okay. Brief. And we're going to talk about a gesture or helpful tip. And with that, we have Mr. Greg. Oh, I remembered his name. It's Greg, Greg Rhodes. Okay, Greg, are you all there? Right. All right. So oh. thank you, Ned, for getting that in two guesses, <laughs> two, two uh, clues, because that means I have longer to talk. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So real quickly, what I wanted to talk about tonight was the quick settings feature, which is a new feature in iOS 15. Uh, the idea is that it would give us a quick and easy way to access some of our voiceover settings. Uh, another advantage, though, is that it also allows us to declutter our rotors. The, the choices that we've made to include in our rotor, we can kind of cut some of those out and put them in the quick settings instead. So let me... Uh, let me get my iPhone and let's let's take a look at this. So we're going to go to the settings app. Messages, three apps, messages, settings. All right. Can you hear that? Okay, Sandhya? Uh, Yeah, a little louder, maybe. A little closer. Okay. Yeah. Sounds and haptics. Okay. So I've opened settings. I want to go to accessibility. So I'm just going to explore with a finger and get down toward the bottom control center display and bright home accessibility button. all right double tap on that accessibility features help you customize your iphone for your individual okay so i want to go to voiceover zoom off voiceover on. a little double louder, tap on that. a little louder greg Whoops. sorry a little louder. okay sorry. let me get closer there you go okay. all right so double tap on that vision heading all right, now I want to. I'm going to go ahead and go down to rotor and stop there for just a second. 
voice app hearing devices sound recognition rtt slash tt apple tv remote side button button display and voice vision head voiceover on button voiceover on braille voiceover verbosity audio commands activity rotor button okay so there's my rotor i want to double tap on that selected characters okay so in rotor we can we can pick whatever items we want to include in our our rotor and that the rotor is the two finger rotating two fingers on the screen we can access any of the items that we have in our rotor if i if i go into this list and do a three finger uh scroll hints rows 16 to 36 of 46. so we've got at least on my phone i've got 46 things that i could put in my rotor now, not all of them would show up in every app because you can only only the items that you can use in that app would show up. But I've got a lot of choices that I could put in my rotor and I can order uh, I can put them in whatever order I want. So let's go out of rotor. Rotor button. OK, and I'm going to flick to the right, uh, I believe, three times. Rotor, type it, quick settings button. And I come to the quick settings. So I'm going to double tap on that. Selected speaking rate. OK, and again, we have in, in the quick settings on the quick settings page, we have an alpha list of a number of items that, again, we can select just like we did in Rotor and we can order them however we want. So again, let me go into this list and do a three finger scroll up. Braille input rows 11 to 30 of 30. So I've got 30 different choices in the quick settings uh, feature. Now I can select whatever I want. I can put it in whatever order I want. And a lot of the items in the quick settings, not all, but some of the items in quick settings are the same as what's available in Rotor. So if I and, and I'll show you, let me go up to the top of my list and I'll show you some examples. Selected, punctuation, selected, image disk, selected, screen rip, selected, reorder, selected, lang reorder language, selected, image description, selected, volume, reorder, speaking rate, selected, speaking rate. Okay, so I used to have speaking rate and volume in my rotor. Now with this option, I can take them out of the rotor I can put them in quick settings and get get to them through the quick ses settings gesture, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, Reorder selected volume. Another one Re selected screen recognition. Screen recognition. I had that in my rotor, and it seems like every once in a while that would get turned on, and all of a sudden I had trouble navigating my screen. So that, that for me, that's a real handy one to get out of the rotor, get into quick settings. All right, so when Apple set up the quick settings, they they gave a special gesture to, to access the quick settings. And that is a two finger quadruple tap. All right, so let's get out of quick settings and let's go into Safari and see what happens settings all right so doc safari i've opened safari, safari. Visit. and i'm on the ibug today page all right so i'm going to do my my quick settings gesture which two finger quadruple tap voiceover settings heading okay it says voiceover settings but it is actually the quick settings so let's flick to the right a few times Filter, dictate, button, speaking rate, 55%. Okay, so there's there's my speaking rate. It, it just pulls up the items that I selected in the quick settings, but I've got my speaking rate. Volume, 100%. I've got the volume. Screen recognition, off. Screen recognition. Uh, all the items that I selected in quick settings uh, now appear there. Uh, down at the bottom. Navigation style flat button. So I've adjustable. got navigation style. I can I can choose flat or I can choose the group navigation. But I've found this to be a real handy feature just to declutter my rotor. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at that, see what you think, and see if it would work for you. Uh, and it, so back over to you, Sandia.
we can take any questions or any comments. Oh, wow, that was great. Greg, thank you so much. Greg, go ahead, Shri. So Greg, do you know if there's any features in the quick set that is not in the rotor? Yes, there are. Uh, for example, in the quick settings, uh, there's a uh, some of the some of the settings that you get to in other voiceover um, line items. Uh, for example, the large cursor. Not that that would help a lot of us, including me, but there's a large cursor uh, thing that you can select in in the quick settings, and there are others. Uh, it, it's not some, but not all of the items uh, in quick settings are in the rotor. Uh, and then there are some other voiceover settings that you get to just through voiceover settings that are in that quick settings feature. Thank you. Video? Also, I might oh, I might add if you ask Siri to open quick settings, that will not work. That puts you in the general category under the regular settings. So you you have to do the two finger quadruple tap. This is sudden. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. So can you put? You know, I do a lot of like character line word navigation. Can that all be there in the no. quick setting too? No. Okay. No, can't do that. There, there are like 30, 30 items listed and, and you know, just you, you just need to scroll through those and, and see what, but there are a lot of things in, I, th I think I did maybe eight or 10 items that I had in Rotor that now I access through the, through quick settings. That screen recognition, I'm, I'm real glad to get that out of the Rotor because uh, that seemed like that got, turned on without my knowing it several times. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Shri. Uh -huh. um, one other question, Greg. Can you change that gesture to like a two finger swipe if someone can't tap four times? Can we modify that gesture? I don't know. It's a good question. I, 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 I don't know. Well, this is Sunday. I would uh, also add, I know some people have had over time trouble with the rotor and the gesture in general, so this might help them. I mean, for people who can do the four finger, two finger quadruple tap, you know, who've had trouble with the turning gesture of the rotor. So, so and always good to have another option. So, All right. Anybody else questions for Greg? It's a useful feature there. I would, this is free. Yep. So since Greg said that, uh, you know, something that we use a lot is the character words and lines. So, you know, that one we can't escape not knowing how to use the rotor. Yes, and I, this is something, I guess what he's saying is you can get rid of all this other stuff and then maybe you only have those three things and they're something. In the know. rotor. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I found that with the rotor, I was, I just had a lot of things loaded into the rotor and it would take me forever to find things. So if I can offload some of those to the to the uh, quick settings, then it makes the rotor a little easier to navigate and get where I want to get. Okay. This is Jody. Go ahead, John. How do you close quick settings after you've opened it? You just do a scrub, just two finger scrub. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody else? Kelsey? Go, go Kelsey. Okay, my question is, is if you, let's say that you have, you know, you've you set up your whatever you want to put in quick settings and let's say that you get a new phone. So when you, when you go to set up that new phone, will those, will that quick settings, is that going to transfer from the old phone to the new phone or do I have to reset that up when, if I get a new phone? I'm pretty sure that would transfer just like all your other settings would transfer from the old to the new phone. Not sure, haven't done it, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's the way it would work. Okay, anybody else? Questions for Greg? Quick settings. 
Okay, Greg, thank you so much. Very you useful. You are welcome. Okay, now party begins and we're going to catch up with people that we had to cut off at the end of the last half. So I think we had Nikki and then we have Sharon. So Nikki, do you still have your question or comment? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm so old that to me, a sheep grabber is a, now they use metal. They use like metal little steps. But a sheet grabber was usually a round rubber ball that was attached to a to a rod that would go over paper when it was being sent through a printing press. And that's oh. what they called the sheet grabber. Okay. So I thought that was really interesting, that whole discussion about the phone or, you know, the computer sheet grabber. So All right. thank you. Um, Just thought I'd is... throw that in there. Okay. Thank you. This is uh, Janet from Colorado. I was going to add, and I was, I was thinking of the... Uh, the shredders that grab the sheets to shred your paper. Okay, thank you, Janet. The sheet grabber. Yes, all right. Okay, now, Miss Sharon, sorry to keep you waiting. You still nope. have your question or yeah. comment? Yeah, I do. My question was, is there, I know Siri, or at least I think Siri can help you with this. Is there an easy way to add a new contact? Ah, uh, is there an easy way to add a new contact? Somebody that hasn't had a turn or would like to help Sharon out, we'd love to hear from you. Anybody? How to add a contact. Is there an easy way? That's the question. This is so, Marty. Marty, go ahead. So what do you mean? What do you want to do with the contact? I want to like add a whole new contact, create a new contact. Um. Are you doing it from an email or are you just doing it like fresh? Well, that, those, are, those are two good questions. I was trying to, I had an email. I was trying to do it for the email. That wasn't working. So I was thinking well, to it, do it either it way. Should. What, what are you clicking on in the email? Because I, you, have to, you have to actually click on, I believe, like a phone number or an email address. And then you look for like the more... There's a more button, I think, and it gives you several options. One of it is two of them are either create a new contact or add to an existing contact. Okay, I'll, I'll look for that. I didn't see that or hear it. Okay, anybody else? This is Jody. Oh, what what oh, about uh, if you're doing it fresh? Hold on, Who? there was somebody else. Who is that? David. David, go ahead. Uh, uh, David? Yeah, you can do it the other way. Like, like um, Okay, hang on. Uh, David, can you get a little close? You sound kind of muffled. Sorry. Uh, there? there is no way for Siri to do that. Okay, there is no way for Siri to do that. Yes, we heard you. Yeah, Sharon, that is, that, that we haven't ever been able to do that with Siri. So uh, thank you, David. Thank you Sorry to break. Yes. This is Jody. Wait, who was before that? Brooks? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Jody. Yeah, if you want to set up a new contact from, a, if somebody calls you on the phone, you can go to the phone number in your recents list of the person that called you. And if you swipe up, you'll get a more info button. You, you tap on that and then uh, you'll get a list. And one of the choices will be um, to uh, set up a, add to an existing contact or start get a new, uh, set a new contact. And that, and you can easily do it from there. So you can, you know, go to the phone number, do more info and then uh, start a new contact that way. And then that will put that phone number in a new contact window and then you just have to add the name and the uh you know first name the last name and, and that information okay thank you jody all right anybody else tips for sharon okay very important this is marty go ahead marty i think her question one of her questions was if you're doing it fresh like you just got yeah. a uh -huh. phone number on a piece of paper uh -huh. so then you go into phone and then in the, the third tab over, it says contacts. And then up at the top of the screen, you'll see it says add a new contact. 
And then when you add a new contact, all the fields are there, first name, last name, you know, and all that. And you'll, you'll figure it out from there. All okay. right. All right, Sharon. Very great, great questions. Very important. <laughs> we, we have to do that on a daily basis. So good deal. All right. Who else hasn't had a turn? Would like to ask a question. Love to hear from you. Jody, with a quick comment. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the other the, the thing you can use Siri for is you can tell Siri open contacts and that will bring you into your contacts. And then you can go to the uh, upper right hand corner and, and hit add new contact. All right. Yeah, to add, yeah, open the app. Okay. All right. I'll now, who's that? Helene. Helene? Yeah, go ahead, Helene. Yeah. Stan, just to remind yourself on the upper right hand corner after you create the contact, make sure you press done. Oh, very important, Helene. Good point. Thank you. All right. Great job. This okay. Shri, go ahead, Shri. I was just going to say, you can also do a one finger triple tap on the contact. If you swipe right, one of the shortcut options you'll get is create new contact. Okay. And you triple tap on what? On, uh, let's say on contacts. On contacts. On the contacts app and do a one finger triple tap. You'll uh -huh. get all the shortcuts. And one of the shortcuts is uh, create new contact. This is Herbie. Okay, go ahead, Herbie. So one other quick thing I'll mention is you actually, if you want to get rid of one app that you don't actually need, you can delete the contacts app because it's right there in the phone app. Um, I guess the one thing you'd probably lose is the ability to double tap, the triple tap on contacts to create a new contact that way. Uh, you, you probably would lose that functionality, but otherwise, um, I've never noticed any advantage of ever having the contacts app on my phone. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. And I, you're referring to the contacts in the utilities folder versus contacts yes. in the phone. Okay. Yeah. They're Just both as far as I've, don't as want to far as, them. yeah, yeah. They've always been the same thing. As, right. Okay. So Great. yeah. Thanks for, thanks. And for deleting the app does not delete the contacts that in the phone app that so. Okay. All right, got it. Okay, who's next? Somebody new, new question, new person. Anybody? This is Marty. Marty, go ahead. Um, I'm wondering if anyone, there's three headsets that I'm interested in. They're all high priced ones. So I'm wondering if anyone's experienced either the Sennheiser Momentum, uh, Bowers and Wilkins uh, PX or PI7 Carbon. It, it, it's a, uh, it's an, these are all over the ear headsets or the Sony 1000, I believe the newest one is XM5. Now, now, now Marty, how many headsets do you have? <laughs> I like to add new ones. You know, <laughs> this is Herbie. You you Create got excitement. one. You got one head, Marty. One head. All right. Okay. No. Do you have a uh, help? Okay. Who can help uh, Marty out with uh, his recommendation uh, question about those uh, products? Anybody? This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Well, first of all, did I hear Marty volunteering himself for another iToy segment at some point? No, I don't he, think he did. Well, so? if, if I if I get one of them, yes, that would be um, my iToy. I mean, what I will say, I've not had any experience with those particular headphones, but two of the brands I'm familiar with. And uh, Sennheiser is definitely, you know, top notch. And I, you know, I did have a pair of Sony headphones in the past. They were pretty good. Of course, they used the old Bluetooth standard when you wanted to, to talk to somebody, but this was like back in 2015. So I thought they were uh, pretty good myself, but Sennheiser is definitely a, um, a top-notch brand. Now, are these Bluetooth headphones or wired? Yeah, they're all Bluetooth, yes, yes. Okay. And I know well, Sony, I, the Sony, I believe, is one of the, the XM5 is one of the newest ones. It has, I think, eight mics in it, and and it has multi-point, so you can connect several. The Sennheiser and, and their Alexa compatible, and they have multi-point, so you can connect several devices simultaneously. The Bowers and Wilkins are just supposed to be premium sounding headsets. 
Okay. Anybody else actually have the devices that Marty's talking about? Okay, Marty, you are going to do some field research and come back and let us know which one you get. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Moving on. Who's next? New question? Comment? Anybody else? This is Cherry. Go ahead, Cherry. Um, with a comment, um, I have, oh, I can't remember which kind, one of the, I think one of the shocks headphones um, allows me to, to pair, you know, a couple things simultaneously. <clears throat> but the thing I don't like about that is because, um, because I'm using speech, uh, if they're both paired simultaneously and for whatever reason, the other device that I'm, that I'm not listening to at the moment um, happens to speak, it cuts out the speech that I want to be hearing. So, the, you know, you have to, you can pair two things simultaneously, but you can only listen to one thing at a time, basically, I guess is what I'm saying. So right. with, right. with uh, you know, voiceover and that kind of thing, that can be a problem. Okay. For me, anyway. Yeah, uh, we've heard this that is before. Herbie. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, go ahead, Herbie. Move so maybe a bit more a down to earth tip for everybody. Well, Terry's is a good point. That's not what I'm talking about. Just going back to Marty's original question. Okay. When looking at different headphones, just it sounds like, you know, different ones have different features. And so for Marty or for anybody that's considering a particular headset, you know, really ask yourself, okay, what feature am i looking for am i looking for sound quality am i looking for alexa capability am i looking for something that's really going to do well with dictation you know like the eight mics for instance on the sony headset that's really good for because i guess you know usually those mic configurations are designed to kind of cancel each other out for like noise canceling and stuff like that so just sometimes really, if it comes down to, if you're having to choose, you know, really think about, okay, what do I want a headset to do? What is most important to me? Okay. And make your decision based on that aspect. All right, great, possible. great considerations there. Okay, moving on. Who's got a new, some people want to, anybody new want a question or comment? This is your turn. If you haven't had a turn yet, or if you have, like to keep it moving. <laughs> Oh. This is David. Yeah, go ahead, David. This is more of a comment. You know, I, I bought the um, AirPods Pro over at Christmas. You know, I thought I'd, you know, get a pretty quality headset, but I've been, been kind of disappointed with the sound of the quality of the mics, you know, like picking up my voice uh, when I'm dictating and such, because I've noticed I can use my watch. Um, to send text and it always picks it up almost perfectly. But if I use the, um, you know, the um, uh, AirPods Pro, it's like very hit and miss. You know, it has to be like totally quiet. I have to be like in a library or something. You know, I have to be very, you know, if there's any kind of little background noise, it's it's very, it's just erratic. So I don't know. It, it seems <laughs> like it's, I'm just kind of disappointed with the whole experience with my AirPods. I'm just, putting that out there if anyone's considering them you know i i think they're a little over overrated <clears throat> okay anybody you know have anything to compare with that or anything to add to david's observation about the so david do you ever use i mean have you compared that experience with your wired headphones i probably have a better i mean i don't know if i guess um, you ever use those yeah i use the wired headphones for a long time but i kept I'd always like yank the wires. Or, <laughs> yes. or, they only last about two months, and I yeah, I they're pretty I used to rough. Go to the store and get them re replaced. They used to do that, uh -huh. uh, but I haven't been to Apple Store, in, you know, since the whole thing started and whatever. So I yeah, uh, I don't do that anymore. But anyway, um, I've had some anchors that are almost as good, and they're like eighty dollars, you know, and these are like double the price plus. And this is Marty. Don't seem to be that great. I mean, that's that's just fine. They're a little smaller. They're kind of nice and compact and cute looking, but uh, yeah, they're okay. <clears throat> this, is, that... this is Marty. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Marty. David, are you saying the head? Are you saying the AirPods Pro is what you're using? Yes. 
do you have the stem um, pointed down? Because depending on how you turn um, those buds might have an effect on, on how, you know, like whether you're like blocking the mic somewhat, which would muffle it. So, and I think you're supposed to have that stem pointing down. Yeah, I try to have them pointed the right. I mean, that there's when you first put them in, it kind of like corrects you once you kind of put them in the right way. It, it then, yeah, you know, it makes that little bleep sound like like you're connected. And uh, and I and when I first got them, I I tested, you know, I, I did the ear fit test and all that stuff. And, um, I don't have know. Have you played I, with the settings and ex, and um, <clears throat> the accessibility or? Uh, I think it's uh, headphone accommodations where you can actually customize your settings. I don't know if that would no, change I anything. Really, yeah, um, tr try some of those settings because you can actually do like darker and, and brighter. Yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of settings in there that, this is that may help you. Hang on, oh, hang on. Okay, also, we just want to try to make sure we give other people a turn to talk. So does anybody else, before I go back to Herbie, anybody else want to add anything about the AirPods? This is or, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. So with, with my AirPods, I guess everybody's ears are different, but with, with, with the AirPods that I have, I have them pointed more at a 45 degree angle uh, toward my mouth as opposed to straight down. Oh. Okay, that's helpful, I guess. It also may depend on how big your head is, right? So, okay, uh, Herbie, go. Okay, two things to Marty's point, the ear fit stuff, uh, the hearing accommodations, that's for listening. I don't think that affects, there's anything in there that affects the mic quality. Um, David, to your point, first of all, I think, uh, I would say the AirPods 3 have the better mics than the AirPods, but I wouldn't, I, I guess just, with all due respect, uh, like your, I, I guess what the, the the AirPods, I don't think they had so much dictation in mind for them because there's a lot of stuff they do, and I'm sorry. I mean, I guess I'm sorry that you're having a disappointing experience with the dictation aspect of it. But I would just say to anybody, if you're gonna get the AirPods Pro, that's not the reason why I would get AirPods. Like, if you're gonna get AirPods Pro, they have features like noise cancellation and transparency, the Dolby Atmos, things like that. I would use a, yeah, and yeah, the wire can go bad after a while, but I would use a standard pair of ear pods or some other device that has a good close-up mic for things like dictation because those mics are distant and they are designed to pick up a lot more. And, you know, maybe Apple could rethink how they do their mic designs. I, I definitely think there is room for improvement, but that's not a reason why I would suggest anybody gets AirPods is if you're wanting to have, you know, I wouldn't, if you're wanting to have a good dictation experience, it's not the reason why I would suggest you get AirPods. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you, you Herbie. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Moving on. Okay, David. Uh, let us know how that goes. Maybe just keep dictating on your watch. I don't know. Not the greatest solution, but okay. Who's next? Somebody new that hasn't had a turn like to ask a question or Kelsey. Kelsey, go ahead. I had an interesting thing happen to me a couple weeks ago when I was at the Apple store looking at the various phones. I was, I was looking at the the iPhone SE and the iPhone 12 and 13, both the regular and the mini. And what I noticed was when I was playing around with the braille screen input on the demo phones it had at the Apple store, I could not calibrate the dot positions at all. So I'm just curious if, is that because it was a demo phone and it just as it didn't, wasn't letting me do it or is there some kind of other issue I'm not because I've never never had any problem with getting that to work right so I'm just curious if any braille input users have ran into that before where if you're trying to use a demo phone you can't uh, can't change the dot positions apparently okay. this is Chanel go ahead Chanel 
I've never used a demo phone, but just Herbie and I were commenting, having a conversation today, just about how bad Braille screen input has been lately. And it just, it, I, it, it's hard. Well, actually we were talking about another issue with it, about words and how we don't know what words we're typing right away. But um, you should, I wonder if, you know, the first thing you have to do is lock the phone and the orientation that you want. Oh, uh, that's what I didn't. I think that's the step I, I missed. With the three finger um, swipe flick. down, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's up or down. I can't remember, honestly. I don't either. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a three finger swipe down, but. Okay. Yeah, that sounds sure. right. So you have to lock it um, in the position you want and then the, then you can calibrate. Oh, okay. I didn't know that you had to. I didn't know that. Well, it couldn't. might help. It might help. Okay. Because I, I did not. To, but okay. Hang on. I I don't talk lock. over each other. Say, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, Chanel, go ahead. No, I was just saying, sorry. Um, It, it might help. So uh, that's all I can think of. Okay. All right. Good luck. Good all luck, right. Kelsey. Great question. Okay. Next. Who's next? Somebody new? Any question? Somebody didn't have a turn. This is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Um, I. I'm wondering if um, the, I guess it would be the iPhone 12 or 13 or the minis, not the, not the big ones, not the, I don't know if they call them pros or whatever. I, I lose track of all that, but do any, let's put it this way. Do any of those have uh, the smaller versions of the 12s or the 13s have um, LIDAR in them now? Um, and I'm thinking that, am I correct that the, the new SE series three or whatever they're calling that one that just came out, that phone does not have LIDAR. Am I correct about that? All right. Brad. Yeah, go Brad. LIDAR is only in the pro and the pro max. That's 12, what I 12 and 13 pro and pro max. Short and sweet. Like oh. that answer. Okay, great. Thanks. Who's next? New question. New comment. This is Keith. Go, Keith. Hey, welcome. Hey, how about a Facebook question? Oh, it's after the eight o'clock hour. Go for it. All right. So uh, when a couple of people share a post or something like say it says Sandia and Michael shared so-and-so and you can flick up and uh, view all posts. Well, here lately, when I flick up to view all posts, it opens up to a blank screen. Mm. Okay, any Facebook aficionados out there? Do you like that word, aficionado? Yes. I thought so. It's not as good as nifty, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody encountering this problem that Keith is having? Well, I don't have the answer to that, but just stay tuned for the next cafe. We'll be talking all about Facebook. Oh my God, I'll two hours, two wait. hours of Facebook. Okay, what? Set it up, set it up. Oh uh, yeah, I hope we can figure out this by then. Okay, all right. All right. Thank you, Keith. Great question. All right, anybody this is else? Free. Tree. Oh, I'm sorry, can Keith repeat that question again? I just want to make sure uh, it's covered. So right now in Facebook, you know, if two people share a post, like say it says Shri and Sandia shared a post, the same post, I guess, and you can flick up on it and it says view all posts. If you double tap that, uh, it's going into a blank screen now, you know, um, used to, it would show the separate post, but now it's just a blank screen. Right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Next question. Anybody new? Did have a turn? Getting down. Okay. To... This. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go for it. Go for it. Can I ask a question about the rotor? Yes, ma'am. You can. Go ahead. 
Okay, what is the rotor and what is it used for? Just a basic answer. Okay, a yeah. nice basic answer for Bridget. Anybody had a turn <laughs> want to explain? Keep it simple. Who would like to explain what the rotor is? This is Keith. Go ahead, Keith. It's short and simple. It is uh, voiceover shortcuts. Basically, it has uh, stuff like Word, speaking rate, volume. You know, it's just a quick way to get to some of those voiceover settings. Uh, this is Brad. Brad. Changes the input mode. Okay, changes the input mode. So anybody else? So yeah, so basically, Bridget, it's a quick way, uh, instead of having to get into all, you know, find your settings and your accessibility and all that stuff, you can put certain things that you use on a regular basis, like speech rate or punctuation or whatever. And then they're always there at your fingertips and you can also use quick settings like what Greg was talking about a minute ago. This is this Keith. Is okay, Keith in the tree. I was going to also say, usually if a uh, nap or something that you're in has actions, it will automatically default to those actions so you can swipe up or down and get to those actions. But I also was going to say in accessibility settings, you can go in and customize your rotor you can, there's a whole list of things that you can add or delete from the rotor and you can reorder them and whatnot. It's, it's really, if you get in there, you can kind of see what, what it does offer. And then you can go from there to uh, customize the rotor. All right. Now we're getting beyond a simple answer, but thank you, Keith. Okay. Shree, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say for anyone that's listening to today's call, we did a really deep dive look at all the features inside the voiceover settings in a cafe that covered each um, each section that's out and available. So if you are interested, definitely check out um, that cafe segment if you want to understand what's all inside the voiceover settings, which Rotor is part of. All right, thank you. Good point. And just Jody, to... with a quick comment. Go ahead, Jody. Yeah, uh, Bridget, when you want to get to the rotor, you put two fingers on the screen and you turn it like you're turning a dial and you can go forward or backward and you can go through the different items in your rotor that way. All right. Um, and Miss Bridget, just to, you know, I mean, if you're interested, like I mentioned, the mentor, the mentoring program is available. So uh, uh, depending on if you have your phone or getting started, we would love to have you. So. Right, All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Who's next? Any new question? Got seven minutes. We have a seven minute question. Okay. Well, too bad. I'm going to ask a question. Anybody else? Okay. So, anybody using Wordle? And I finally got Wordle. So Wordle is this popular game that everybody plays. You get a word every day and then you have to guess it in six tries. And anyway, it gives you colors to indicate whether you've got the right letters in the right places and so forth. So I, it is telling me, I got it to the point, I finally got it, I had trouble, but anyway, I got it to the point where it's telling me what letters are in the word but it is not showing me the colors or indicate. So how does voiceover tell us? And I'm doing this on my iPhone. That's what this call is about, the iPhone. So anybody using the iPhone to play Wordle? Should probably ask that question first before I. <laughs> David. <laughs> David, oh. David and then Chanel. Uh, I've not actually tried it. There was an Apple Viz uh, podcast that went into detail on how to make wordle accessible yes um did mm -hmm. you do that one yeah i listened to that multiple times and i had to actually you know get some more help but then they never actually play the game so i never really see how to to do it like you know it's supposed to tell you like red means it's not there i, I don't know you read yellow and green you know the stop sign <laughs> I guess, so oh yeah yeah so but uh it's telling me l is absent q is there you know whatever but 
anyway, I'm still on the very, very baby level. I just got it to work yesterday. So Chanel, go ahead. Yeah, it might almost be easier to do on your Mac, but as long as it's telling you the certain letters are absent, um, you just kind of have to go through your keyboard and look at the letters. It's been a while since I've done it on my iPhone, um, but I don't know if the iPhone will actually tell you if you have the letters in the right order. I, I mean, there's got to be yeah, it's got to tell you, like, if you, yeah, but knowing that A is there, you need to know if it's in the first position or is it in the right, right position. And it definitely does that more in um, okay. Safari on the computer. It's been a while since I've played on there. But okay. yeah, I would, some people do it on the iPhone, but I, I don't remember. Um, as long as the only thing, David basically said the thing I did, you know, was thinking of, you have to have that extens accessibility extension. Yes. But, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And if anybody's listening, you have to be very careful about how you copy the code and all that stuff. So I did all that. And uh, so anyway, okay. All this right, is Shree. Shree. Have you tried, are you just swiping left and right when you play the game or are you actually doing touch and explore on the screen? Uh, just twice swiping i've swiped all over that thing and can't find where it says but have you done like touch and explore uh i don't know Maybe the, the reason i'm saying that is sometimes you know I, i've experienced where when i'm swiping voiceover skips certain things oh. but when i do a touch and explore and if i touch that element voiceover reads it so i'm just gonna randomly touch different parts of the screen okay all right i will try that this is Herbie. Uh, okay, go ahead. You know, one other idea, it may work. And I mean, this feature has improved a lot. I wonder if, um, I definitely would try Shree's method first, but if that doesn't work, try it with the screen recognition on yes. and see if that gives you any more information than with it off. Yes, I did do that. I was so proud of myself. I heard all of you saying screen recognition. And so I did that and it just says sign. A and I'm like, oh, that's really. Well, it's you're the helpful. second person that's taken iBug advice. You and Helene I, today. It's impressive. I know, right? We set a new I, iBug record, guys. Okay, all right. Who's next? Anybody else with a very short question? This um, is true. Go ahead. We've got three minutes. Hurry up, go. Yeah. So I think Sri ought to do the uh, cafe on uh, how to play Wordle on the iPhone. Oh, it's coming. Don't worry. It's one day in the future. Okay, Sri. Uh, is anyone? seen any difference on their home pod installing 15.5.1 okay anybody have a home pod and has updated to the latest operating system silence this is herbie go ahead i have not tried this today but i did notice yesterday it was not showing up in my um airplay settings when i wanted to go share some audio to it Okay, hey, answer is no, he has not tried it today. <laughs> okay, all right, anybody else? Okay, okay, we're going once, we have one more question. This is Herbie. Hang on, Real Herbie, quick. we're gonna give okay. somebody well, it's more. Of a, it's more of a quick announcement actually that might people might find interesting, but okay. okay what, go. Uh, WWDC is next week. All right, okay, very good. From the 6th to the 10th. Okay, all kinds of good announcements will be coming up. That's great. Okay. And Anybody? I'll be live tweeting Quick the question. event on the 6th, you know, the whole jazz. So. All right. Yes, we appreciate that. Okay, quick question. Everybody, last minute, because you have to wait until next week. Jody. Jody. Uh, to update to 15.5, are there any problems? I'm supposed to do it tonight. Are my icons going to get rearranged or any weird thing like that? Okay, anybody? question what's going to happen it's probably a minor update it's going to happen when my phone gets updated this is terry go ahead terry uh the quick answer is not that i'm aware of i'm uh, not okay. finding that okay good. the case a cautious answer okay <laughs> all right all right very good okay guys this brings us to the end of our call and we are so excited to thank my co-facilitator greg thank you so much for taking on this daunting task and making it look easy so thank you greg very welcome and he's fading out he's already gone to bed i think you are so. very welcome <laughs> 
God, you're so mean. I know. That's only because <laughs> I like you. All right. Okay. So with that recap of events this week, it's a nice quiet week. So let's enjoy because who knows what will be coming next week. So Thursday, the only thing we have, so no, nothing tomorrow on Clubhouse because it's the fifth Tuesday. So don't go there and don't worry. There's nothing happening tomorrow. Wednesday, Thursday is Trekkie Talk. We're watching season four, episodes seven, uh, 18 and 19 of Next Generation. And that's uh, going to be lots of fun. So li listen to the programs, read the script and come and come and participate in that. Friday night is I Bug Night at the Virtual Movies. And we're going to be watching the King's Speech. And Ned is correctly pro, uh, you know, announced or figured out all the whole connection. It is the seven, the platinum jubilee for Queen Elizabeth II, and this is her father, the story of his uh, stammering. He has a, st a stutter, a, prob a stuttering problem, and so it's a really great movie, so come check that out. And I think those are all the announcements. Go visit our website and start reading the book for the book club is, what is our book? Uh, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. And the new DB number is 57200. Thanks to Marty. I hope I got it right. Okay. With that, we're saying good night. Good night, y'all. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank Be you. safe. Stay well. Good night, everybody. Good night.